The hydrous microstent is designed to enhance aqueous outflow through the natural drainage system by stenting the canal. The device here you can see is 3 clock hours in length with a proximal inlet, a transition zone, and three windows to enhance aqueous outflow through trabecular meshwork. This device acts as a scaffold to keep the canal open. The device is made of nitinol and can be seen here placed within the canal. The gonioscopic view shows the proximal inlet in the anterior chamber, while the remainder of the body is used to strut and keep the canal open. This results in a trimodal action of aqueous outflow. The delivery system here is by using an adjustable cannula, which can be placed by a left or right hand insertion, and a tracking wheel to deploy the device within the canal. It's important during the initial insertion process to ensure an angle up approach of about 20 degrees to penetrate the trabecular meshwork. Once we see the tip of the hydrus entering the canal, the cannula is leveled off and maintained parallel to the plane of the trabecular meshwork and the canal system. This animation just shows the brief steps of the hydrus implantation. Again, start and target to ensure that the incisions are placed adequately. Typically, the hydrus incision is placed about four clock hours away from the insertion site. The cannula is angled up about 20 degrees and pushed against the inner wall and outer wall to penetrate the inner wall. This is placed at the level of the pigmented trabecular meshwork. We initially advance the stent with the tracking wheel, and once the stent has engaged and passes and tracks nicely in the canal, the cannula is leveled off to a parallel position. Here we see the interlock that is used to release once the canal stent has been placed adequately within the system, and the canal is withdrawn with a sweeping motion. The transition zone should be covered approximately 50% to allow for the inlet to be shown in the anterior chamber, while the body of the device is placed here within the canal. The hydrus incision is a special incision made to place the hydrus cannula through. Here we're making it one clock hour away from six o'clock, or the vertical axis, and we're very carefully directionally pointing it to where the hydrus will be implanted, where my forcep is. The incision should be placed just in the peripheral cornea, avoiding an anterior insertion or placing it too posteriorly where we can get blood. Here we've tilted the patient's head and the microscope appropriately. We're gonna place the cannula bevel up through the incision for ease of entry. And now rotating here, so now the cannula will be more on fosse with the tubercular meshwork. A Swan Jacob is used in our non-dominant hand. And here the side and GoPro views can show the positioning of our hands here as we approach the trabecular meshwork. Note the pencil grip with our hand position onto the inserter. We're starting to the right of our field, rotating our hand to approach the trabecular meshwork here in the infranasal quadrant. Our forward motion in through the trabecular meshwork with pressure against the TM helps to get the tip in, as well as the wiggling motion helps to get the distal end of the cannula in through the trabecular meshwork into the canal. The roller wheel is advanced carefully and slowly and ensuring the hand is relaxed, not putting excessive pressure onto the angle. The interlock now has released from the mouth of the implant, and we are now using a rotational technique to disengage. It's important not to pull right back to the incision and instead rotate the hand as we showed to come off here from the proximal end of the implant. The implant is nicely visualized throughout the canal. We can see all three windows through the trabecular meshwork nicely placed into the canal. During the implantation, it was noted how smooth the tracking of the implant was within the canal, which is a good clue to ensure that it's in the right space. We can see the parallel position of the proximal end of the implant. You can see with the transition zone just in the area where that trabecular mesteric incision was made. And this is the ideal placement of the proximal end of the implant into the anterior chamber angle. The inserter is then withdrawn through the hydrus incision. This video shows the uh, after implantation of the hydrus microstent, the injection of tripan blue showing nice uptake here, here within the nasal quadrants here post implantation. This shows that we have good outflow over the three clock hours within which this device has been placed.